you today. And look, you're all spread out. We're not going to shift the church over to a change. That's going to be a nice thing. Welcome. And I want to especially welcome our guests and visitors today. Invite you to participate in the liturgy at whatever level you feel comfortable. It is Gospel Sunday, so there's going to be a lot of singing. Um, we also ran out of the booklets. So, um, yeah, I pulled everything we had out of the office and we ran out. So that's not a bad thing, but that does mean that we have to practice Christian charity and maybe share a little bit. So hopefully that works out for y'all. Um, this is my first Sunday back after in the pulpit. So um, I promise I will not uh, preach too long. Um, which will be a relief to some of you, I'm sure, but there you go. But I am going to preach, so um, just prepare yourselves for that. We did alter the liturgy slightly to accommodate more singing, um, and I know you all can sing because I stood up here and heard you sing, so no excuses today, okay? Sing out. Um, you see the announcements in the bulletin, and I know that there are several more that um, are out there that didn't make it in. I want to remind you all about the food basket. That is a permanent thing that we're doing now, so please bring your donations. Um, there is a list there above the thermostat and also lists in the hall that you can take with you to kind of help us provide some assistance to our local food bank. And we will dedicate whatever we have in the basket on um, November, on the first Sunday of November. And, um, Marilyn, you had some announcements? Yes, so the bazaar is coming up first Saturday in um, November. If you haven't been contacted, I'm contacting you now. <laughs> um, we need people to help, and I think you just calling people about food. And people are welcome to bring crafts and whatever they have made to sell at our craft fair, also baked goods. Um, go really well, and I hope everybody's planning to attend. It was a yummy turkey dinner, a really nice community event. And, and also, Chris was going to hand out all of the posters, but she is not doing well at all. She is pretty much down. So I have a whole slew of posters out there. If we could divide them up and have some people do part of them, that would be terrific. So I'll talk to you afterwards. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that we missed? Uh, Bob? Announcement. But Nathan and I uh, drove 500 miles this weekend up to the Camp Sawtooth to the Presbytery meeting. And at that meeting, Pastor Nathan was installed as moderator of Presbytery. <laughs> so now, now we've got the big gun. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Bob. Um, and thanks for driving. I, I appreciate you doing that. I should also add, at that same meeting yesterday, we elected Nancy Smith to serve on the Presbyterian Nominating Committee and Vina Mascarenas to serve on MRC, or the Committee on Ministry. So um, it's a lot of representation for a church our size, and I think, it, I think it's a very positive um, step in our relationship with Presbytery as, whole, as a whole, since it's not been as good as it could have been in the past. Any other announcements? All right. Let's take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and our minds to worship Almighty God. God is our rock and our fortress, our refuge and our strength. God is our hope and our trust. We come into God's presence with joyful song. Our first song this morning is number 22 in your booklet, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. And you'll note that it, it kind of got cut off at the end. Just keep singing and we'll figure it out at the end. <laughs>
by the time we got to the third verse, you were all on board. Thank you. Please join our call to worship, which today is taken from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the fire of the Lord. Praise Him with tremble and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and the pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please stand. In our next two hymns, number 20, There is Sunshine in My Soul, and number 14, Love Lifted Me.
seated. And join in our unison prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin. Merciful God, forgive us when we exalt ourselves and mock the humble. We choose to believe we are self-sufficient rather than trust in your strength. Open us to your spirit that we might serve all people without regard to outcome, devoting ourselves to your honor alone. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God rejoices when we repent and return, offering us finest wheat and honey from the rock to sustain us in new life. Rejoice! You have been reconciled with God. Thanks be to God. And as we have reconciled with God, let us reconcile with one another through a sharing of Christ's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gloria. We're going to do two more songs, number 17 and number 18. Somebody's knocking at your door, and you guys can stay seated. seated sit. well, leave them sit for this one. Really? You can sit when you sing that? <laughs> then stand up. I'm fine either way. Why don't you go ahead and stand up, and we'll do 17 and 18. <laughs>
come to our prayer time today, and you see our list, and we will pray for the people on our list and the situations on our list. But I want to ask if there are other prayer concerns, joys or concerns that we need to share to look to God. Donna. What is her name? Wendy. Wendy. Thank you. Are there others? Vita. I have a, I have a friend who's amazed, name will be nameless, but he has had some heart open heart surgery, two bowel replacements, Ooh. and maybe a third in a couple of weeks. So, prayers for me. Thank you. Um, my next door neighbor's mother passed. Um, mm. My neighbor, Katie, was my daughter's best friend growing up, and which is ironic that she's next door neighbor. But so Melba and I, you know, I've known Melba since we moved to Bear Lake. So just prayers for her family and her friends. Thank you. Any others? I'll ask prayers for, um, I don't start until January, but um, I'll ask prayers for my term as moderator of the Presbytery. I'm in all the meetings anyway, so it's not, it's all, the only difference for me is that I have to lead them now instead of just sit there and look pretty. So, um, but I will ask prayers for that. Bob. Well, I'm sure everybody's been following the turmoil over in the Middle East. Yeah. There's so much suffering going on that they really need help. And then we, we lose sight because of that, that terrible thing that's going on. We lose sight of the people in Ukraine with five million people displaced in that country and, and hundreds of thousands of people killed. It's prayers for all of those folks. Amen. Thank you. Others? Yeah, Bob's getting a new part on Tuesday, so... Ah, that's right. <laughs> Another new part. That's right. It's a hip replacement. Yeah. Is that right? We will, we will keep you in our prayers for that as well. If there are no others, let's go to God in prayer. Holy and merciful God, we are grateful to be in your presence and in the company of fellow believers, our siblings in Christ. We don't take for granted the opportunity that we have this morning to worship you, and especially to worship you through music. We are told that he who sings prays twice. And so, holy God, there's a lot of prayers coming your way today. And we are grateful for the opportunity to do that. We are grateful for new positions, new um, body parts, I guess. We are grateful for so many things. And yet... There are so many prayers that we need to lift up to you. And so for the prayers that you have heard already and the prayers we will pray as we move forward, we pray saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayers. Prayer. God, we lift up Nancy's friend's son, Scott. We lift up Kylie, Joe, Chris, Julie and her friend Don. We lift up Becky and Ruth and we lift up Ken. And these prayers we lift to you, Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up the Ledbetter family. Rossi, Chris P, Donna D, and Cindy. We lift up Blair and his grandson McKay. And we pray saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up Dagmar and her son-in-law Wayne, Michael, Richard C., Shane, Paula, Ron and Connie, Jim and Josette, and all congregations searching for ministers. 
And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we looked up Cheryl, Jana and Todd, and Jana's cousin Jeff. We looked up Kathy D, Alicia and Steve, Kathy R, Billy Joe, Ross and Linda, and Damien. And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we continue to lift up the work of the Belize Mission. The peoples of Israel, the Gaza Strip, and Ukraine. May your peace break out as quickly as war has done. We pray also for victims of violence, war, and disaster. We lift up our country and its leaders, and we pray today for peace in our hearts, in the community, and in the world. And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, we take a moment of silence to lift up those prayers that we hold deeply within us, so deeply, in fact, that we are unable to speak them aloud. And all of these things we look to you, Holy God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, as I said, we've modified the liturgy a bit, so normally we would put a hymn here, but we, or children's time, but we're just going to go straight to our readings. <laughs> Excuse me. Our first reading today is Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, and I'm reading from the Message Translation today, which is one of my favorite translations, actually. <coughs> Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing, and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your life. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. And our second reading today is Psalm 98. And I'm also reading from the message here as well. Sing to God a brand new song. He's made a world of wonders. He's rolled up his sleeves. He set things right. God made history with salvation. He showed the world what he could do. He remembered to love us. A bonus to his dear family, Israel. Indefatigable love. The whole earth comes to attention. Look, God's work of salvation. Shout your praises to God, everyone. Let loose and sing. Strike up the band. Round up an orchestra to play for God. Add a hundred-voice choir. Feature trumpets and big trombones. Fill the air with praises to King God. Let the sea and its fish give a round of applause with everything living on earth joining in. Let ocean breakers call out encore and mountains harmonize the finale. A tribute to God when he comes, when he comes to set the earth right. He'll straighten out the whole world. He'll put the world right and everyone in it. 
these words, these readings, are God's words for God's people. And we respond by saying, thanks be to God. And I'll invite Bobby to come forward and give us some music.
That's the first time I think I've heard you sing in person, Bobby. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's much better than on Facebook, I promise you that. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Bobby is the cantor uh, at First Presbyterian Church in Ogden. So I am grateful that you made time to come and share your gifts with us today. So thank you. So the title of today's sermon is called Glorifying God. And it, some of you may have, this may ring some bells with you because it is a bit of a recycle, and I apologize for that up front. Well, maybe I don't, but in any event, some of you may recognize some of this from past sermons, um, but that's okay. Sometimes I think it's okay to hear things more than once. Have you ever heard of the worship wars? If you haven't, let me explain. The worship wars are primarily fought over what style of music is used in worship. Will we use traditional instruments, meaning organ and or piano, and sing the ancient hymns of our faith? Or are we going to use guitars, drums, and synthesizers and sing modern day worship songs? Now, That may not seem like a big deal, but this is actually a sticking point for many congregations. And people actually leave churches over stuff like this. In larger churches, leadership sometimes creates two different worship services. And that's an an attempt to make everybody happy, which basically makes nobody happy, if you want the truth. As somebody who's been a professional church organist since I was 17, I'll admit that in the past, I have been a very active participant in the worship wars. For many years, to my way of thinking, the only valid instruments for worship were the organ and the piano. Maybe a trumpet or two thrown in on Easter. But that was it. I'll also admit that in the past, I've been a bit of a snob when it comes to church music. After all, the organ's been used in churches for a thousand years. Guitars and synthesizers, not so much. My attitude about what constitutes appropriate music in church began to change when I was hired as the organist in my home church in Seattle. Madrona Grace Presbyterian Church, as I've mentioned before, is a predominantly African-American inner-city congregation which worships in a very traditional African-American style. So much of the music they sang was new to me, and I had to adapt quick if I was going to make it. And to be honest, I didn't like the style at first. But as I grew more accustomed to it, as I started paying attention to the words and understanding what the words meant to a people that had been enslaved, to a people that had been oppressed, I started getting a growing, having a growing admiration for the message that these hymns and songs portrayed. Something in me shifted and I realized that they were truly following the psalmist's admonition to praise the Lord, even if I couldn't see it. So I had to broaden my concept of what it meant to sing a new song to God. And that wasn't a bad thing at all. If you look at the first six verses of Psalm 150, which we used as our call to worship today, you'll see that the word praise appears 12 times. It's the key word in this passage, but I also want you to notice what's not included. While the psalmist does mention certain instruments, only because these were the musical instruments the writer was familiar with, there's no specific prohibition on what instruments can or cannot be used to praise our God. For me, it's become more than an either-or proposition. For me, I've come to believe that the worship wars are nothing more than a distraction from what God is calling us to do. We have been called first and foremost to worship and glorify God. Everything else becomes becomes secondary to that call 
And anything that pulls our hearts and our minds away from answering that call needs to be put aside. If the worship is truly authentic, that is to say, not just a performance, then you'll know it because you'll feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And honestly, it won't matter what instruments are played or what songs are sung. I truly enjoy standing in the middle of a cathedral on Easter Sunday singing Christ the Lord is risen today at the top of my voice, accompanied by a magnificent pipe organ and a full brass ensemble. And I truly enjoy standing in the middle of an evangelical church singing in Christ alone at the top of my voice, accompanied by electric guitars and synthesizers. And there's more. I truly enjoy standing in the middle of an African-American congregation singing Christ is all at the top of my voice, accompanied by a Hammond organ and drums. Each one of these experiences touches me in a different way, but all of them help me to do the same thing, worship and glorify God. Now, if you're not familiar with the hymn, Christ is All, let me explain it a little bit. It's one that's sung in a mostly African-American church context, so let me read you the words of the first verse and the chorus. I don't possess houses or land, fine clothes or jewelry. Sorrows and care in this old world my lot seem to be. But I have a Christ who paid the price way back on Calvary, and Christ is all, all and all this world to me. Christ is all, he's everything to me. Christ is all, he rules the land and sea. Christ is all, without him nothing can be. Christ is all, all and all this world to me. These words have stuck in my mind ever since I first heard them at Madrona Grace. And they seem to perfectly capture the reason why we should be praising and celebrating and glorifying God. Siblings in Christ. Worrying about what style of music used to praise God is nothing more than a waste of time. It doesn't matter if it's traditional, contemporary, gospel, or some combination of the three. Yes, we all have our preferences. But arguing about which style is best only detracts, distracts us from the purpose of gathering for worship. And the only thing that really matters is using our music, our voices, our instruments, our passion for the glorification and praise of the God who created us all. Amen. I will invite the ushers to come forward at this time for the morning offering. Amen.
Amen, amen. Let's pray. Holy and merciful God, you have blessed us with much bounty, and we are honored to return a portion of that bounty to you for the use of the furtherance of your kingdom in our community and in our world. We pray with gratitude in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing, and we will do number 13, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, as our closing hymn. What's up, fellas? Is awesome. I love that hymn. Um, and I can't find. He's with his tail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't find my charge and benediction, so we're going to have to wing that one. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Bobby. Again, it was wonderful. Um, I want to remind you, please stay after for potluck. There might even be mac and cheese, hopefully, maybe, maybe. We'll see. If not, there's still a lot of good food out there. So hear this charge. Go out in the world, praising God, and God will delight in your praises regardless of how those praises are manifest. And may God watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another and all God's children said. Alleluia. Amen. And our sending hymn is I'll Fly Away. Amen.